So today I'm doing something I've never done before but wanted in my 15 years as a bike journal, go inside a wind tunnel. So I'm here at Silverstone, you hear the racket behind me, I'll go inside there to put some new bikes through the paces. In the back of the wagon, got a Trek Madone, new Canyon Ultimate and my trusty giant TCR. And I thought I'd bring you along to show you behind the scenes. Right, first up, the new Trek Madone. Let's see how fast it really is. So at 40 k an hour, it's, uh, it's quite windy. I know it sounds really stupid, but it's like you're in a tornado, uh, quite something. And really tricky keeping your position. Got this data down here to, to help, of course. All right, track me down, done. Next up, the new Canyon Ultimate, and then my trusty giant TCR. I got the new MV wheels. I'll put the wheels in the Ultimate and see how it compares. So same wheels, tires, and then just the bike will really make a difference for an upcoming video. So we're testing the bikes at two speeds, 30k an hour and 40k an hour at three your angles, zero, five and 10 to see what differences there are. I think these are you know, good real world kind of speeds and your angles and some of the results are quite fascinating. So I had a really fun, fascinating and insightful afternoon in the wind tunnel. An amazing experience, I have to admit. I come away with a bunch of data to crunch for upcoming videos and also lots of ideas for other videos and products I can test in the wind tunnel. So I'm thinking best bang for buck, the cheapest upgrade to get more aero, other sort of videos like that. And on that note, let me know down below what sort of product testing and what sort of themes you'd love to see from videos in the wind tunnel by leaving a comment down below. I think there's a lot more potential we can do in the wind tunnel. So I went into the wind tunnel with a clear focus. Firstly, the brand new Trek Madone SLR to see how aero it really is. And the results from that testing were fascinating and you'll see those in a review coming up very soon. I know I'm a big tease, sorry, but definitely worth subscribing to the channel if you haven't already to see a review of that Trek Madone SLR with some actual wind tunnel testing. And the other two bikes I took into the wind tunnel were the brand new Canyon Ultimate CF SLX, which I reviewed a few weeks ago, and my trusty giant TCR Advance. I've had quite a few requests from you to compare those two bikes, so that's what I'm doing. I'll do my ride quality and other assessments of the two bikes in that video coming up very soon, hopefully next week. And I'm testing the bikes with the wheels I came with, so DT Swiss in the case of the Canyon, but I have a set of NV 4.5 with the same 27 mil wide tires, which I put on both bikes to remove the variables of the wheel and tire on the two bikes. So we really get to the, uh, the nitty gritty of the differences on those frames when it comes to aero. Quite an interesting comparison as well, because the giant TCR is two, three years old now, and the Canyon Ultimate is brand new. One has external cables, one has internal cables, and differences like with the Trek Madone earlier, were very interesting and perhaps not what you might expect, but I won't reveal any more detail right now. You have to watch that video coming up very soon. Like I said earlier, hopefully next week. So my time in the wind tunnel was fascinating, loads of data to crunch, but I want to make sure this isn't a one-off. And in a perfect world, depending on the financial viability of this, going forward, ideally, I like to take every test bike I get, every road bike particularly, into the wind tunnel and over time build up my own library of data for all the bikes I review. And whether I do that or not really comes down to the feedback I get from you. I'm producing content on a channel for you to help you choose the right bikes. So let me know whether you see a value in me taking every road bike into the wind tunnel to see how it compares to other bikes. Um, because there is a big financial impact from doing this. So that's something I need to work on, whether I get a brand sponsor, whether I just take up the cost myself because I see the value in giving the content to you for free. So let me know down below your thoughts on doing that going forward. But I do love the idea of building up a library or a leaderboard of aero testing for all these new bikes. I don't think there's any other magazines or YouTube channels doing that sort of testing as well. There is Tour Magazine in Germany who do aero testing, 
But outside of that, I can't really think of any examples, but let me know if I'm wrong. So lots of data for me to crunch over the next few days and weeks, but the bigger takeaway I learned from my time in the wind tunnel is just a reminder of how important the body is on the total drag you face. We've all heard the figure of 80% of the drag you face is your body. And a real illustration of that is when I rode in two different positions. So a standard position on the hoods that we all use on a regular basis, and then dropping my elbows down to aggressive aero position saved me 70 watts. So a staggering 70 watt difference from just going from there to there. Now try and work out how long you would take the train to get anywhere near a 70 watt improvement on your FTP. So I think that's a topic for another video. The real easy savings you can make in aero drag from just your position on the bike alone. So really fascinating insight. So if you wanna go faster or reduce your drag, just crouch down into that aero aggressive position and you save yourself up to 70 watts. Anyway, I'm gonna dive into some numbers now and crunch some numbers on a spreadsheet for some upcoming videos. And if you wanna see a video of the fastest, most aerodynamic road bikes available right now, then check out the video right here.